Greetings and welcome to my channel. This is Nicole Glass and in today's video I'm going to look at the similarities between YouTube and microstock photography. So a few months ago I started posting regularly to YouTube and it felt a lot like it did when I signed up for a new microstock photography platform. It takes many many months of consistent constant uploading, coming up with new ideas, and putting in a lot of work that you're probably not getting paid for in the beginning. If you're new to microstock photography, you'll probably notice that you're putting in a lot of work, many, many hours of photographing and editing, and you might just be making a few cents or a few dollars, and you'll find yourself questioning, is this really worth it? Is this really going to pay off? Well, it took me a few months of being on Shutterstock and uploading consistently th throughout those few months before I really started to see earnings that were worth my efforts. A lot of people in the micro stock world were saying that it's pretty much impossible to do well with stock photography in today's day and age and that it was pretty much a lost cause and a waste of time. They said stock photography was dead, but I didn't listen and I kept at it and now I make a pretty decent income from stock photography, which pays a good number of my bills and pays for a lot of my camera equipment as well. So when I started uploading videos to YouTube a few months ago, I was in a similar situation. There were a few people in my general circle of people that I knew in real life who had started YouTube channels and those channels were not really taking off and eventually they just lost motivation and stopped uploading. But I believed that I could be successful on YouTube. I had a lot of hope and so I kept uploading and putting in a lot of work and producing weekly videos even if nobody was watching them in the beginning. I sacrificed a lot of social engagements in the beginning just so I could sit at home and edit videos. But it's okay. I enjoyed it. And I'm by no means a big YouTuber. In fact, I'm still very, very small. But last month, my channel became eligible for monetization, and now I have another stream of passive income coming in, aside from stock photography. And this is all thanks to you to all of you who continue to watch my videos even though I am a small creator. So YouTube and stock photography have a lot in common, but these similarities can be found in pretty much any endeavor in which you're trying to create a source of passive income. Let's say, for example, that you're trying to create an ebook. Well, it could take many, many months or maybe even many, many years of work that you're putting into writing that ebook, and this is all work that you're not getting paid for before you actually finish the book and put it up for sale. But the hope is that one day your ebook will be up for sale and create a source of passive income for you for the rest of your life, or at least for the rest of your life that people still read books. And the same thing goes for creating courses, creating digital products, all that stuff. So whenever you are uploading, whether you're uploading photos to a stock photography platform or videos to YouTube, just remember, you might not see any sort of earnings or good results, results that make you happy for weeks, months, maybe even years, but down the road, it could pay off. It could really truly pay off in the future. And that's what passive income is. So thank you for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That's it for today. See you in the next video.